Hey! When we issue an HTTP request to get or update data, there is always the chance that something will go wrong. The item the user requested isn't found, the updated data doesn't pass the server-side validation, or our boss hasn't paid the electric bill and our server is down. In any of these cases, we'd want some error handling. What are our options? Well, in the service, we can ignore the error and simply catch the error in the component. We can catch the error and re-throw, which should return a valid observable. Then we can catch the error again in the component. Or we can catch the error and continue. It must return a valid observable of the appropriate type. In this last case, it's a bit more difficult to get an error message to the UI because we're not catching the error in the UI. Let's take a deeper look at these last two. So our first scenario is catch and rethrow. Here we catch the error. We're using an observable operator for catching the error on the observable. It takes in an observable that might emit an error notification. And if there is no error, it outputs the input observable basically a no-op. If there is an error, it outputs a replacement observable. The callback function that's called here handles the error. It returns that replacement observable and optionally throws an error. So to rethrow, we use this handle error method. It takes in the caught error. It then creates the replacement observable that emits an error notification using throw error. Here we return an observable of never. What's that? An observable of never is an observable that emits no items to the observer and never completes. So it emits neither values nor the completion notification. It's good for returning an observable when an error occurs. So we use observable of never when we emit an error notification. And it helps retain strong typing. What do I mean by that? Well, this is what our code would look like. Here, we're using a declarative approach to define our HTTP get and assign it to a variable. Here, we have our catch error. If an error occurs, we return an observable of never as the user's dollar. If we instead used observable of void or observable of null or observable of undefined, when we hovered over user's dollar, we would see that it would be an observable of void or user array or null or user array or undefined or user array. And we don't really want it to be mucking with our strong typing. By using observable of never, when we hover over user's dollar, it doesn't change our return data type. It's still an observable of user array. For the catch and rethrow scenario in our service, we declare our user's dollar, which issues our HTTP GET request. In the pipeline, we use catch error to catch the error. Then we handle the error and then throw an error, returning an observable of never. In the component, we then catch the rethrown error. Here we can set a local variable that we can bind in our template to display our error message and we return empty. What's that? Empty is a simple observable that emits no items and immediately completes. It's a constant, and it's great for error handling when we don't have an item to emit, like in the case we had an error. Here's the result. So we see our message, though we might want a better message here. The other scenario is to catch and continue. For that, we'll look at another example. In this case, we get all the users. So here are the first two, and we could scroll down and see all the others. And each one has their task list here, a list of their Latin to-dos. To build this page, we need to get the data for all the users. Then we get the related data. For each user, we get their to-dos. So we put them into a single structure as user data. Where do we put our catch error in this case? Do we put it here in the pipeline of the inner observable? The problem with that is it won't catch any errors from our outer observable. So maybe we put it here in the outer observable. That will catch errors from the inner and outer observable pipelines. 
but it stops the inner pipeline. Maybe we do both, but what's wrong with this error handling? As I alluded to a little bit, recall when an observable generates an error, it stops and it won't emit any further. So if there's an error getting the to-dos for one of the users, none of the user's data is returned. And that's not what we want. We'd prefer that if an error occurred, that we just continue on for the next user. So we want to catch and continue. We do that by returning a replacement observable with the user, and in this case, the empty to-dos. Do you see any issues with this approach? Well, one issue is that the template has no way to know whether the empty to-dos are because the user actually has no to-dos, or if an error occurred and the system couldn't get those to-dos. And in real applications, it's often important to understand the difference between no data and, hey, I couldn't get the data. So what do we do then? One option for getting a message to the UI is to add a property to our interface. So here our user data was comprised of our user and their to-dos. We could also add a message that would hold our error message. We then set the property. So here in our catch error, we're returning an observable with the user, the empty array of to-dos, and a message. We can then bind to that message in the template. And here's the result. We couldn't get the to-dos for Leanne, so we see a message, but it continues and gets all of the other users. Let's look at another scenario. Let's say that we want to retry. I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but frequently I start ordering my Starbucks as I'm leaving the house, and about halfway down the street, I lose my connectivity, and luckily, I don't lose my order. The Starbucks app must be smart enough to retry. So here is how we would get our code to retry. We simply add the retry operator, and we specify how many times we want it to retry. So here, if an error occurs and it can't get the data, it will retry three times before it falls into the catch error. But sometimes we want a little fancier of a retry. Then we can use retry when. Retry when is quite a bit more complicated than just the retry. So instead of just passing in the number of times you want to retry, you pass in all of the code defining exactly how you want it to retry. First, we use a scan to accumulate a counter because we want to accumulate how many times we're retrying. In this particular example, after three tries, it throws an error. For three or less tries, it increases the accumulator. Then it does the delay when and tries again. The delay when uses an increasing delay between the retries. Notice we're taking the value times 500. So every time through, we increase the delay by a half a second. This is called exponential backoff. So it keeps retrying, waiting a little longer each time until it hits more than three retries. For our last scenario, let's look at action streams. In this particular example, our action is that a user selects something from this dropdown. We then want to react to that action by displaying the to-dos for that user. So here's our action stream. We create a subject, then define the read-only part of that subject as an observable. We then emit when the action occurs. So when the user selects something from the dropdown, we issue a next on that subject. Then here is our reaction. The user selected action emits when a user is selected, and we get the to-dos for that selected user. But what's wrong with our exception handling here? If we catch the error and rethrow, our entire action stream stops. Recall that when an observable generates an error, it stops and it won't emit any further. That means if there's any error in getting any of these to-dos, the next time the user goes to pick a, another user from the list, this won't react and it won't get that data. We don't want that to happen. So in this case, we want to catch and continue. So here we return an empty array. If we again want a message to appear in the UI that we couldn't get the to-dos for that user, we could again use a wrapper interface like we looked at earlier. So to wrap up, 
catch the error in the service using catch error. If you need to catch and continue, return a valid observable, normally initialized or empty data. If you need a message in the template, use a wrapper to provide it with the emitted data. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.